Maribel Ramirez says it's her worst nightmare. A school shooting. Ramirez has a child in the Edinburgh CISD. Yeah, photojournalist Sergio Puente said he saw police running across the road as he was getting here. Now what he saw next is police going inside this motel and two people coming out in handcuffs. Just as he was arriving around 1.08 p.m., we saw what looked like SWAT teams and police from various departments surrounding Studio 6. From that perimeter, they started going in heavily armed, three to five at a time. They blocked the roads from 8th Street to 2nd Street, and as they came out, they brought out two people in custody. One man, one woman sat down on the curb detained by McCallum police. They were loaded into a McCallum PD squad car. We contacted police spokesperson John Sines, and he says at the moment they don't have information to release on who they are or what was happening. Halfway between here and the mall, a man was sitting down at McDonald's. He told us what he heard. 6 a.m. So I'm checking the forecast and we're expecting a high temperature today of around 105. Let's factor in that humidity though, and it's going to feel like it's 110 degrees. We make the journey to Fafurias to meet up with Four Star a specialized unit with Border Patrol who focuses on search, trauma, and rescue. They're here to show us what kinds of conditions illegal crossers go through on a daily basis. Yeah, so right now we're working an operation called Operation Heat Wave. Borstar paramedic Daniel Reyes says heat-related deaths and injuries are a common reality for immigrants heading north this time of year. Agent Reyes says once they get a call about a group in the field, it's their job to intercept the group before anyone succumbs to the elements. He says the record heat has agents out in full force. So we have resources coming from uh, our national team in El Paso to come assist us working 24 hours a day, seven days a week to uh, try to help out with that cause. These immigrants have to walk through high brush, thorns, sandy terrain, and barbed wire fences. This makes their journey even more difficult. And the deeper into the brush they get, the more dangerous it becomes. Agent Reyes says smugglers often don't prepare crossers for what they're about to go through. She joins us live now from the scene, Leslie. Right now, the First Baptist Church here in Sutherland Springs is blocked off while investigators continue to comb through the crime scene. We know at least 26 people are confirmed dead, and the victims range in age from 5 to 72 years old. Dozens more are injured. The shooter, we know, is a 26-year-old white man from New Braunfels. Authorities found him dead in his crashed vehicle in Lavernia, a town not far from here. Authorities say a citizen who was close to the church at the time of the shooting, shot at the gunman with his own rifle. That citizen and another citizen then chased the shooter down the road. Authorities have not said who killed the shooter. They have also not released any potential motive for this shooting. I can tell you tonight there is a strong sense of unity in this small town. <laughs> Under any other circumstances, Sutherland Springs would be peaceful and quiet on a Sunday night. Tonight, though, more than 100 gathered in front of the town's Baptist church. Governor Greg Abbott among the crowd, consoling people from the community. To pay our respects to everyone who got hurt and everyone who died tonight. 26 people are dead and even more still fighting for their lives, like this man's high school classmate. He got hurt and he's in surgery right now, but I think he's going to pull through and we're praying for that. It's unclear why this happened. So many questions remain. My kids uh, say like their band directors goes to that church. They have friends that go to that church, but we don't know if they were actually victims of what happened today. While authorities continue their investigation at the church and beyond, the community stands together in tears and disbelief. This is our little country church. You know, this is the country where nothing happens. All praying for healing and waiting for answers. I'm told the pastor of the First Baptist Church and his wife were both out of town when the shooting happened, but their 14-year-old daughter was killed. Another woman at the vigil tonight told me she knows a man who lost all eight of his family members. The Texas Rangers are leading this investigation with the help of the Wilson and Guadalupe County Sheriff's offices, as well as the FBI and the ATF. Governor Abbott has ordered flags fly half-staff in honor of the victims at least until Thursday. 
Reporting live in Sutherland Springs, Leslie Aguilar, Channel 5 News, this weekend. A group of homeowners we spoke with say they've always battled flooding after heavy rainfall, but they've never experienced anything like they did this morning. Folks on Iris Street and Far describe their neighborhood as quiet. Green yards, chain link fences, and toys left in the yard usually line the street here. I want to paint a picture for you of what the people on Iris Street and FAR have experienced today. If photojournalist Sergio Puente can actually zoom out, you can see that the water is knee deep to me. There's no avoiding it on this street, and the yards here, well, they're non existent right now. We didn't expect this, and this is like a shocking. Unfortunately, this area is really bad. Radio check, uh, Charles 31, models will be 77 and 238. They just reduced their speed right now. Greetings from Los Fresnos. We're known as a speed trap here. How do you feel about that? I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of a little embarrassing. That has been a rumor and something that's been said for yeah. 30, 40 years. So You have to be careful when you get off of 77 onto 100 and going to South Padre Island because they work this whole thing. You'll find the through town name peppered throughout the internet described as a speed trap. There's a discrepancy though between the notoriously given speed trap title and what city leaders say. You're always going to get complaints about speed and stuff and I think the, uh, this city's always been um, targeted as a, a speed trap which we don't see ourselves that way. Uh, our primary duty is to keep the uh, people that travel to Los Fernandes safe. You know over the last year four speeding tickets a day. There's not very many uh, citations. 24 hour period, that's one every six hours. I can't see how that would be a speed trap and that kind of uh, bad stigma that we have. Could it have been true before? Maybe it could have, uh, but it's certainly not today. So we looked at the numbers. Los Fresnos gained just over $400,000 in 2014 and 2015 from speeding citations. Last year, though, that revenue cut in half. Does it hurt? Not really. I mean, the freezing temperatures this morning, it's a waiting game. We just have to wait and see to see what happens. Farm assistant manager Juan Vasquez says it's impossible to cover the 2,500 acres of land at Rio Fresh near San Juan. Vasquez tells us it's too early to tell if crops were damaged. It's drizzled it. We found ice out on some of the plants. Swiss chard, uh, mustard greens, uh, parsley, kale, collards, cabbage. It's, it's always concerning when you get down to fr uh, that freezing temperature, you definitely get concerned. It was kind of scary. And somebody just reaching out to my wife randomly. We don't know who they are. Life got derailed on this Bronzeville intersection for father of two, Suri Rivas. I was picking up my kids from school. A routine errand came to a stop. Carrie Oscar, this hurricane is flexing its muscles in a big way. Take a look at the waves behind me. We're starting to see them really lap up over the seawall. And then pan over this way. Look at all the debris. The wind is now so strong. When it hits your face, it feels like the rain is needles. Take a look what it did to the palm trees. You can see just completely lifting these leaves right the tree. It's hard to imagine, but all day tourists have been out here on this very spot taking photos. Tourists brave the rain for a glimpse of Selena. Others slow down and snap cell phone video of the Gulf before the storm. I'm just out of here checking out the weather, seeing how these waves are going, and just came to enjoy this nice weather before it gets worse. <laughs> Aguilar is all smiles now, but she says she knows what's coming. I'm gonna stay home. I'm gonna go home right now. And I'm As steady rain falls, steps from the harbor. Business owner Alex Lucanaris does what he can to protect his livelihood. This is the first time in the two and a half years that we had to close down. The windows at his bar and grill are boarded today. He knows the closure is a blow to his pocketbook. They put us all in a bind, but what are you going to do? It's Mother Nature. With Hurricane Harvey closing in, Alex is one of many people doing whatever they can to prepare as rain falls in Corpus Christi. 
the wind and the rain that we're experiencing right now. It's not the only indication of just how serious this storm is. Just got word from Corpus Christi police that they are no longer responding to emergency calls until after the storm. So if you have friends and family in this area, now is a good time to seek shelter. I know we are about to. I'm live in downtown Corpus Christi, Matt Riss, Channel 5 News at 6. An eerie silence in the town of Woodsboro. Power lines and debris block access to homes in this cotton gin town an hour northeast of Corpus. It's, it was bad. It was rocking and rolling all night long for a solid 10 hours. Frank Linney and his dog Bear survey the damage to his neighborhood. The force of the hurricane ripped off his shingles. All you heard was a lot of noise. It was just really windy. Attention now turns to cleaning up. For Frank and Bear, it's hard to process. Well, we're a good little community, you know. And we'll clean it up and it'll get done, but it's just going to take a long time. Seeing the damage up close is one thing, but from a wider view, it's hard to take in. And this is my, the back, like I said, the back porch. You can't see it right now, but but inside my kitchen fell in. Jane Moya shows us the damage to her home of 10 years in Refurio. It's a disaster. I just need some, oh, just a disaster. It's hard for Moya to find the words. Pieces of her ceiling are on the floor. The kitchen partially collapsed. Devastated. I lost everything. Mm -hmm. I lost everything. It's a disaster. You know, my, I don't have nothing. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. Shingles pop as we walk through her backyard. Shingles, small bits of the protection for her home were scattered about like random sticks. Like many of her neighbors, Moya said she could not afford to evacuate. How do you do that when you're poor, when you have no money? Some people got it made and some people don't. Moya will wait on federal disaster relief to rebuild. She has no homeowner's insurance. Maybe we can talk to FEMA and get it, get it, get an application going, you know, and see. I don't know. Refurio County is included in a federal disaster declaration for this storm. I just hope somebody comes out and help us. A waiting game neighbors may soon know all too well.